Welcome to the Art Lady channel. Today I have with me some kindergarten students and we're going to be making butterflies today. Would you like to say hello? Hello! Great! And they are six, most of them are six years old today. This is at the end of the school year. And I will show you their examples right after the video. So uh, we'll have some YouTube stars here from my class. But what I have in front of me are some uh, dried butterflies. And these are actually real butterflies that I found. And then I put them in resin. Now these butterflies were, I found them already uh, dead. So they were dried and dead when I found them. And then I wanted to preserve them. So I did some um, resin, made some resin molds and put them in. But you can see, if I bring it up a little bit closer, we can see some of the detail here. And I have them arranged so that they're symmetrical, meaning the same on both sides. So the butterflies actually opened up. But here I can see at the top, we can see some of the little legs. And I think I can see some of the antennas there as well. And the same on this one. Here. So this is what's going to inspire our lesson today. But we're going to be making our butterfly side view. So we're not going to make it so that it's symmetrical, same on both sides. It's going to be just the side view. So we're going to start off by finding the very middle of our page. And my kindergarten kids are going to draw this with me, step by step. So if you want to draw along, that'd be great. So we're going to start off in the middle of our page. And we're going to go ahead and do a circle for the head. Now. The bugs have three sections to them. They have a head, and let's put an antenna right here. Stick up, a line up, and another line up. Do we know the parts of an insect? Yes. Oh, great. And I'm adding a little bit of a, I'm adding a little bit of a dot on the top of those antennas. Now the next section of the insect is what part of the body? Do you know? A thorax. Thorax. Ooh, I'm impressed. So we're going to add the thorax, which has come over and back. This looks like an elongated letter C, or almost an oval shape. And that was our thorax. And now we're going to add, what's the last section of our? Wow, I am impressed. Now we didn't practice this and I didn't even ask them this question before. I'm, you must be learning this in the classroom, right? Yes. Wow, okay, so now let's go ahead and add the abdomen. Now after the abdomen, we're gonna add some legs and we're gonna come down from the body and out. And we're going to do another one down and back. And the last one down and back. So there's three on one side, then there's three on the other. Unless you want to make them really small. We could do really small ones. It's almost like a sideways letter L. If you want to stick three back legs in, that way we have six legs on our insect. Now we're going to add the big, beautiful wings. So I'm going to come down from this and I'm going to come across my page, across. And this is going to be the beautiful part of the butterfly. And then near the head, I'm going to do a diagonal line and I'm gonna to go toward this, straight up toward the edge of my page. Pretty large diagonal. And then I'm gonna connect side to side. So I'm gonna go up and down. So I'm connecting both sides of the wing together. And this is gonna be my side view wing. And now the back wing it's kind of an interesting perspective, but I like this view of a butterfly. It's more natural. The back wing is going to come, curve it up toward the top of your page. And then we're going to come back down. 
curve it right back down to where the other wing meets. Now we're gonna add some pattern on our edge. And if we go and make small circles really close to the edge, and I'm doing them in a row just on the edge, just like this. You could put some more in, really small. Okay, I'm doing like a band of circles. And then I'm just gonna connect this down. Right along the edge of the circles, I'm bringing it down. And I'm gonna do the same on this wing, a band of circles. And we're not gonna color in anything right now. We're just doing our band. And then I'm gonna connect the edge. We're making this a simplified version. And then I'm gonna do a small up and back, kind of a small vein that's inside this, or, or a small curve, which is like the veins inside the butterfly. And then I'm gonna make lines coming from this curve to the edge of the butterfly. Like that. And then I'm gonna add another bump right here. I came from the edge up and back. It's a side view here of this one. And then I'm just making some lines coming over for the back wing, like so. So now I have some wings with beautiful patterns inside my insect. We've got the antennas, the head, the thorax, the abdomen, and the six legs. Now we're gonna put it on a very large flower. So I'm just gonna do a petal of the flower here. So from the legs, I'm gonna come down. On this leg, I'm gonna come down and around. This will be a really big petal of a flower. I'm gonna bring it right down off the page. See how I've kind of curved it? Right down off the page. And now I'll just make another bump from here. So I'm gonna come up and right off the edge. This is part of a flower. So he's resting on the edge of the flower. And I can do one on the same over here too. Up and back. Now we can put some of the insides of a flower inside here. We're gonna now add some a filaments, a filament to the flower, which is part of the um, stamen. And on top of the filament is going to be an anther. So filaments are long, skinny lines. And we're gonna do, a, they're gonna come down and connect. See where they're meeting together right here? They're gonna come out. And I'm gonna do another one and maybe one more. And the anthers are little ovals on the ends, just like this, right at the very top. And a lot of times these are yellow or yellow orange. And there we have our beautiful butterfly resting on a flower. To finish off the butterfly, what I did was I traced over all my edges with a black oil pastel. And now I'm gonna go ahead and add some watercolor paint on top. You can also use, if you wanted these to be white, you could have just put in you know, white dots. I just used the black uh, to make it, uh, to do it real quick. And now I'm doing a resist with a watercolor on top. And I'm using some of this orange paint. And I'm just painting right over the lines of the butterfly. And as you can see, the paint just resists right off. Now you can even layer some color. I'm gonna put some red even on top of this to make a nice red-orange color ribbon. So it's up to you how you wanna paint it, but this is a great technique called watercolor resist. So I'm just painting this in.
And now I'm gonna do my flower. And what I did for the flower is I used uh, some outlines, simple outlines with purple and pink. And then I colored the anthers yellow. And then the filaments I colored orange. And now I'm gonna take some red and go right on top of this and make a nice, beautiful pink flower. And you can see how the resist techniques look really lovely with the oil pastel. And so all my detail still shows up now because I've done it with oil pastel. And I can paint right on top and get a beautiful flower design. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do my last two. And it's up to you if you wanna do your background or not um, with paint. And I suggest if you do do it with paint that you're really watering down the paint so that you can do a nice wash of color, almost like a, I call it a whisper of paint because you want the sky to be pretty light. If you look outside, you'll see the sky is not dark, dark, dark blue. It's a whisper of blue, I call it. So we use more water and less color to create that whisper of blue. To do this, I've washed my brush and then I've also started out with some clear water. because so you wanna make sure your water is not contaminated with other colors. And so I'm gonna get mostly, I'm gonna wet the blue first, then wash my brush, and then I'm barely touching color. And even just adding plain water, you'll get a really light wash of color. And you can move this around and have a very light, light blue. Now this blue will dry a little bit lighter once it's once the paper's dry, it'll appear to be white, but lighter. And sometimes if you wanna put a little bit of a darker area, maybe up in here, and then just use pure water. Watch, if you just touch the edge with pure water, you can blend it and move it so that it has some different values going from dark blue to a light blue. And it just gives more interest because this is a large area of blank. And by having that variation of color, it gives more interest to the person who's looking at your picture. There. And I'm gonna go ahead and finish up mine and then I'll show you what it looks like. And there is the completed butterfly with some watercolor resist with oil pastel. And I'm gonna show you now what my kindergartners did today. And here are some examples from my kindergarten class. And they did a lovely job. I'm gonna show you just a few of them. And please let me know in the comments how your butterfly came out. Um, and if you haven't already subscribed, we would love for you to join our channel.